This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Finally, we have a brief chapter on ethics. Ethics comes into strategic management and strategic planning because often strategic decisions do have ethical consequences. Uh, so if your strategic decision is to close down operations in one country and move operations to another country where maybe labour is cheaper, then of course there are adverse consequences to the people who have been made redundant. Uh, or we have it now in the UK, uh, companies considering fracking, the, the release of gas in some sorts of rock. Uh, there are ethical consequences uh, or repercussions from the decision to frack. Uh, it, it could be disfiguring the countryside, people worry about uh, earthquake or water pollution and so on. It, it may or may not be well founded, uh, but nevertheless uh, any sort of decision to substantially change what your business is doing or to go into other areas of business are, are likely to knock on ethical consequences. Now the ethical stance can be defined as the extent to which an organisation will exceed its minimum obligation to stakeholders and society at large. In other words, we're talking about doing more than just being legal. You have to be legal here. We're talking about going a little bit further. Uh, and even if you uh, aren't sure what the, the company should, you know, what I want to say, and even if you're not convinced that ethics should be followed, good ethics, good morals, if you like, should be followed for their own sake, there are very good commercial financial reasons why it is important to be ethical. Uh, and most of these rest on the fact that if you're not ethical, uh, usually at some point you're going to be found out. Uh, and if you're discovered as uh, having been dishonest or unethical in some way, uh, really there's hell to pay for it. It's a much more serious situation if you had been honest at the start. And we've seen uh, the like of, say, drug companies uh, who allegedly covered up uh, side effects from some of their drugs. Some of the side effects would make people more prone to heart attacks. Uh, and uh, they knew about this, uh, but they kept information secret. Uh, and when the correlation between the drugs and heart attacks was eventually discovered, uh, and then it was found out that the drugs company knew about it, then the damages and penalty payments uh, and so on, were, were much, much larger than they would have been otherwise. So what being ethical does, it will enhance your organization's reputation. And enhancing your reputation is really part of the, the goodwill. Uh, organization with an enhanced reputation, uh, people will prefer to trade with them, deal with them, enter into joint ventures with them and so on. Being ethical will minimise financial damages and regulatory penalties. Uh, I mean, it is part of a pharmaceutical company's risks in a, in or an avoidable part of their risks that at some point one of their drugs will be found to have had side effects. And everyone can live with that. Uh, but what they won't live with and what will increase the damages and penalties is if that knowledge had been covered up. Lower risk, uh, in other words, if you have the reputation of, of being honest and open and coming clean with problems and so on, uh, if people are confident that there's nothing more nasty in the cupboard to come out, that you haven't been cheating somewhere else, you're being dishonest somewhere else, then they perceive that you are a much less risky company. Uh, and, and therefore, the uh, lower risk, lower financial damages, lower punitive damages, uh, lower risk of losing your right to... Um, trade, your license and so on, lower risk that you will lose customers. And lower risk should mean cheaper finance. You will know from financial management type papers that the higher the risk, then the higher the returns required, not only by equity shareholders, but by lenders. Uh, if you are investing in what you might call a dodgy, slightly dishonest company, uh, you know that something nasty is likely to happen then you will want a higher return. Being ethical opens the door to cheaper finance and cheaper finance opens the door to higher net present values and higher net present values opens the door to higher share prices. 
So in the long run, ethical companies will do better than unethical ones. Because certainly in the age of the internet, certainly in the age of whistleblowers, be sure uh, unethical behavior is almost certainly going to be discovered and made public. There are four possible, possible ethical stances that you can take. Uh, you can say that your responsibility really starts and ends with shareholders, in particular short-term shareholders' interests. So uh, you will do whatever maximizes, say, this year's profits. Uh, and we have been, you know, going on during this this paper that really uh, short-term shareholder interests and maximizing those short-term profits is not really something that we want to do. Uh, really, if you want to do anything, it's long-term shareholder interests. The idea of sustainable competitive advantage. And very few companies are going to take that ethical stance. We'll get away with what we can this year and we won't worry about next year. At worst, they will look at long-term shareholder interests. Some companies take the view that we should extend that away from shareholders and look at multiple stakeholder obligations. Not only should we be ethical towards shareholders, but towards customers, towards employees, towards government regulation, towards competitors and so on. So the idea of hacking into a competitor's database and downloading their latest discoveries, uh, 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 apart from it perhaps hurting your long-term shareholder interest if that's discovered, they would say we should not do that. This is not ethical behaviour. Uh, or, or trying to maybe escape taxes whether legally or illegally, uh, whether it's tax avoidance or tax evasion, some companies would say it is not right to avoid taxes by some sort of complicated arrangement that passes them through various um, countries where it ends up maybe eventually in Panama. And then some companies, if you take a, a view that there should be a real uh, shaper of societies that it should be carrying, carrying out a flag and a banner through to change society's attitudes. Um, hard to see an example maybe of that. Uh, maybe the uh, maybe the shop called Body Shop uh, did that maybe quite successfully. Uh, Body Shop was uh, an organisation uh, which said, you know, we're not going to test any of our soaps or shampoos on animals. They're one of the first to rule that out. They said that if we're buying uh, plant extracts and something from you know developing countries, we will make sure we give them a good price. Uh, it uh, promoted the idea of uh, recycling the plastic containers in which these were sold in and so on. Uh, and they were really into pushing this idea of fair treatment, ethical treatment, recycling and so on. You might argue that it was all a PR stunt at the start. Uh, I myself don't think it was. I think it, it turned out to be very successful. Uh, and of course, many other, what you might call cosmetic companies, have followed the lead uh, and are trying to take this more ethical stance to really change the relationship between the company and its use of products uh, in society. Quite separate to uh, ethics is corporate social responsibility. Uh, and corporate social responsibility is saying really that the organisation of the company occupies a part of the economy, if you like, makes use of resources and so on uh, there, uh, that they should be accountable not only for financial performance, but also other impacts that their operations might have on society and the environment. Uh, and they imply that there is an expectation that a business will act not just in shareholder or even, well, state shareholder interest, but in the public interest. So this is why some companies, for example, will make maybe donations to a charity. It's maybe why some companies volunteer uh, to pay their staff higher than the minimum wage, even though they don't really have to, either to attract staff or to say, or stay on the right side of the law. They're saying it's why some companies would go further than the legislation would say uh, about protecting the environment from uh, gases and liquids being discharged to the, the river and so on. 
Now, I think you have to be a little bit careful uh, uh, about some of this. It sounds fine in practice, uh, but let's let's concentrate on charitable donations. A company wants to make charitable donations. The law still is that it is the duty of the directors to maximise the wealth of shareholders. Uh, and here we have the directors saying, well, let's give half the profits to a charity. That, that, that's potentially uh, not following, uh, they really not following company law, not following their legal obligation to shareholders. There's also a, a kind of lack of transparency, how and who, uh, who has chosen which charities these are going to go to. Is it just the director's favourite charities? Is it the director's spouse's favourite charities? Who is deciding where this money is going to go to? Uh, besides, if you don't pay this money to the charity, you can presumably pay bigger dividends and then you can let the shareholders, if they want to, the shareholders can make personal charitable donations to charities of their choice. So there's a kind of a, a democratic, uh, democratic sort of deficit there about choosing the charities. There's also a kind of legal deficit maybe and how much you should give away, how much expense you should undertake meeting your corporate social responsibility. There is no problem, I would say, in making small charitable donations. Small charitable donations, for example, uh, you can easily argue is, is part of advertising and marketing that you seem to support a local uh, hospital, local school, local sporting team, something of that uh, uh, sort. Uh, if you can uh, use in part of the advertising literature the idea that we're reducing our carbon footprint year after year, that we're increasing the amount of stuff that's recycled year after year, and you feel you're getting good publicity out of it, then the cost of the recycling might be money well spent. Uh, and, and you can justify this in a PR business, uh, PR basis. But if you're going a lot further than that, uh, then I think there are uh, things that some of the stakeholders maybe ought to get involved in uh, other than just the directors uh, and make their own wishes known.